many events that we are living, that people had never dreamt of in their entire lives. I remember ten years ago, when, together with Mr. Alexei Fedorov, who was studying in the fourth year in the Bauman University, we were talking about quantum computers, and we thought it was all just science fiction. We couldn't believe that. But now we're anticipating reaching 100 qubit of processing capacity. So, Mr. Fedorov, when are we going to get to there? We've done a lot here. That is true. Today we're going to talk about technology, as well as about the people and the way they've lived through these years and how we have come to this event. And just ten years ago it was impossible to imagine such a forum. It was impossible to imagine the state paying so much attention to quantum technology. But before we move on to the discussion, Mr. President, I would suggest that you take the floor. Please, Mr. Putin. Thank you very much. I don't believe this would be a fundamental speech since the topic of our today's discussion is very specific. Nevertheless, I am glad to welcome all the Russian and foreign scientists, engineers, representatives of the business and all the participants of the Future Technology Forum. The moderator said that ten years ago it was hard to imagine such a forum taking place. Why not? We've been doing everything to ensure such forums. We were working, effort, we're doing all the effort for the research, the research by young scientists as well, to make sure that we reach the necessary parameters and the necessary results. And the fact that we achieve our goals, I believe, is very important. We set achievable goals that are necessary for our state and we move towards them achieving specific results. We hope that our today's meeting would set a tradition. It is already becoming a tradition to discuss the promising areas of technology which in this or the next decade are going to gain more and more traction and many of them would define the image of national economies and the worldview in general. I am not going to talk about scientific specific topics. This is a job for those who are sitting next to me here, at least for some of the colleagues as well as those sitting in this hall. There are many specialists among you who know this topic like no one else. Nevertheless, it is important to talk about how we work at the state level, how we work on the international scientific and technological cooperation in the conditions of the essentially a blockade declared against Russia by the authorities and more likely the ruling elites of certain countries. We have actually faced attempts to limit the access to technology, therefore forcing us to renounce our sovereignty and the right to choose our own historical path. Our opponents were hoping that we would step back and give in. But this will never happen, as we say in such cases. Russia has only one path, the path forward, the sovereign path without isolation. We respond to the outside challenges by improving the quality and the efficiency of our work, by spreading freedom. This is exactly what happened back in 2014. I already talked about it and you're all well aware of that. When we witnessed the first wave of external sanctions which pushed the rapid development of certain areas, including Russian agriculture, today similar positive processes are gaining traction in the industry and technology. At the same time, we understand that under these conditions, the most important factor for accelerated development is concentrating on the priority tasks. First of all, we should concentrate on the areas where we already have the necessary technology and the global level products, for example, in nuclear energy, in artificial intelligence and many other areas. Secondly, we should concentrate on the areas which are critical for the development of the country and where we must obtain 
we must obtain and have our own competence. At the same time, this is not only about scientific development and basic solutions. This is about having the entire technological and production chain, our own equipment, the elementary basics, the software, and, of course, the people, the professionals. As we solve the tasks of technological sovereignty, we're not going to close in on ourselves, as I said in the beginning. On the other hand, we have all intentions of expanding equal, mutually beneficial technological and scientific alliances with other states. Let me note that as part of the Russian chairmanship in BRICS next year, we will discuss this with our partners, including the specific projects in a number of important areas. In particular, we are talking about the high tech in computing, the storage and the transfer of data. Let me talk in more detail about this. Besides, this is exactly the matter that is in the focus of the Future Technology Forum this year. It is our principal goal is to transfer the entire economy, the socialist sphere, the authorities, the state authorities to a new level of quality of their work, to introduce the new principles of data-driven management. We believe that the effect would be comprehensive and it would multiply with time. This would mean an exponential growth in the quality of management and productivity, new jobs with high competences and high salaries, the availability of services, and new opportunities for our citizens, for the people. The digital platforms would allow us to develop smart cities and unmanned systems. It would allow us to use the digital doubles of the technical systems and production processes. It would allow us to begin the wide use of high precision farming in our agriculture and reach a new level of logistics and energy. The development of telemedicine and online education provide new state services and ensure financial transactions. Overall, the platform solutions open the path to fully automate not just the technological process but also the relations between the market actors and everything related to data is critical for such changes. Essentially, we are talking about the systemic infrastructure for our further development, for the future of our economy in general. It is apparent that any dependence in this area would mean serious threats for the national security, weakening or even the loss of the national sovereignty. We should think about this as we look into the future. Let me be frank. This is exactly what certain countries were trying to do, using any means possible to hook us up on foreign technological platforms and standards. And we must admit they were successful in that. Sure, dependence is unavoidable, and this is an objective factor. Nevertheless, There is a difference between the general words about openness and our own products that are better for us. And in practice, we can see the difference between our own solutions and foreign ones. We were buying numerous critical technologies from someone else, from their shops, a sort of supermarket of ready-made solutions made by someone else. But at a certain point, they simply shut the doors on us and put on the closed sign the door. We have learned our lessons and did the necessary conclusions. The government, the state and private companies have done a lot to change this situation. But there is no doubt that we should move forward and find solutions for more complicated tasks to do the planning for the long term. Within a year, I suggest that we prepare a new national project until 2030 the national project to establish the data-driven economy. Let me underline, this is not only about consolidating the existing toolkit of support for the digital economy, artificial intelligence, as well as high-tech projects, including roadmaps for the development of quantum technology, which you are talking about today and which are discussed by state companies and implemented in practice. 
at least they're working on certain technologies and that we must establish a comprehensive mechanism of the introduction of new developments and technologies. This concerns any type of technology and areas of life. We talk about this a lot and we are gradually moving forward as we find solutions. But we should accelerate such work as much as possible, including in the establishment of data-driven economy, as I have mentioned already. Everything matters here, including the research, the professional training at all levels of education, the establishment of conditions to produce and test the trial samples of the products, the demand for Russian products and services in the area of calculations and data processing, as well as flexible settlement and management for the production facilities. It is important to take a systematic view of the new era of technology to create the industries and markets of the future. This is exactly the logic that we used as we adopted the national project to develop our unmanned aerial vehicles. As agreed with the colleagues, I would suggest that we adopt it before the 1st of September 2023 and keep this in mind as a priority area as we adopt the budget for 2024 and the plan period to 2026. Distinguished colleagues, the new national project to establish the data-driven economy should concern all the stages and levels of our work. The first one is the accumulation of data, including the high-sensitive sensors, including quantum sensors, which radically increase the precision of object positioning and allow us to reveal diseases at the earliest stages. They are used in other new areas, for example, in the systems of satellite and on-ground navigation and communication. Second is the transfer of data and communication systems. We're not just talking about the current generation of communication systems, but also the next-gen systems, which would transfer information in real time, which is critical for robotics for the unmanned transportation and to automate the city environment. The third point is the sovereign infrastructure for calculations or data processing and storage within the country. First of all, we're talking about Russian cloud platforms and uh, data processing centers, which would effectively support the work of the state authorities, the industries and the communication operators, as well as provide the necessary computing power using the new principles. I am talking about computers that use the new technologies that I was shown and we were talking about, the quantum and photonic technology. We will talk about that later in more detail. The fourth point is the data security. We must fully keep this aspect in mind as we move forward. It is necessary to continue working on the quantum communication technology and quantum encryption technology. Such technology ensures the stability and sustainability of information systems against cyber attacks using the classical and quantum computers. They allow us to create systems that would be impenetrable for hackers and it would allow us to establish a secure quantum communication system. And by the way, Russia is among the global leaders in this area. Sure, we're only making the first steps here, colleagues have talked about it, but still, this is a significant result for us. The fifth point is the sovereign national standards and protocols of data processing. Such standards are necessary for secure data storage and processing, including the citizen's personal data. We should use the technology of quantum cryptography, cyber security and protection from attacks. The sixth point is the algorithms for data analysis and processing, including artificial intelligence-driven technology and the Russian software. Such national tools ensure the sovereignty of our data, reducing the dependence on foreign suppliers and increasing the level of control over the critical infrastructure. And naturally, we need the so-called code repositories, the Russian platforms and services, which are required for joint work of the programmers not only from Russia but also from other countries of the world. Let me underline that work in all of the areas that I mentioned should be aimed at systemic changes of all the industries, all the areas in the social sphere, the state management, 
as well as the quality of life in the entirety of our country. Distinguished colleagues, I would like to talk in more detail about quantum technology, which is the main topic of our today's discussion. We've been at the exhibition and we've been talking with the representatives of the academia and they were trying, at least trying to explain what we are talking about. We need to focus on the current tasks, but also we should look beyond the horizon into the future by expanding our opportunities and the capacity to control the smallest objects and to use the most complicated physical processes for the good of progress. The quantum world is not eager to reveal all its secrets, but the Russian researchers stand ready to solve the most complicated scientific tasks and open the way to creating new advanced solutions. And there is no doubt we will support such aspirations. As part of the national project to establish the data-driven economy, I would ask you to define the measures of support for fundamental research, including the increase of the financement. We are talking about the scientific research in the wide area and range of technology, many of which are using the principles of quantum physics and mechanics. They are related with the achievements of the first and the second quantum revolution that we're currently witnessing, and uh, this is what I would was just mentioned by our moderator during the exhibition. The second quantum revolution pushed us to create the new quantum computing technology. However, according to all estimates, the new types of processing computing systems would more likely be hybrid systems that combine the so-called quantum core and the classical technologies of semiconductors. Let me underline that Every 10 years, the computer processing capacity increases by about a thousand times. The modern microcircuits contain tens of billions of transistors. The race is going at unbelievable speeds. The news bear supercomputer Christopher Neo is capable of uh, producing about 12,000 trillion operations per second, while the Yandex supercomputer called Chervonenkis is almost two times as powerful. I know these are not the leading ranks, but they are prominent enough and they deserve respect. There are huge promising prospects and the requirement for capacities does grow. Our proprietary solutions are critically important in order to advance AI, in order to build major neuro network models. For this end, we need to energize our microelectronic industry. This is the reason we are providing the serial production of ultra-pure materials, technological matters. In Zelenograd, we are building a new scientific and technological center. We deploy technological equipment projects involving our partners from Belarus, among others. By way of reminder, the high level of cooperation during the Soviet era ensured conditions for training engineers, for developing unique technologies in order to build outstanding scientific schools in photonics, among others. Thanks to strong fundamental groundwork, today's photonic integrated circuits is an operation technology full-fledged at that Moscow has a inter-industrial cluster for photonics. On its basis, scientific centers, startups, businesses, universities are all together working to build new solutions. They are launching them into production. Similar platforms for experimenting with future technologies for their testing and practical impl implementation need to uh, are required in other advanced industries. I know that the Moscow government Mr. Sabanin is here, and we had multiple discussions on the subject. The government of Moscow started working on building the Moscow Quantum Cluster. My request to Mr. Sabanin, please elaborate on the topic today in more detail or in lesser detail. 
colleagues, I met on multiple occasions with uh, Russian scientists, compatriots working in foreign universities, in research centers. Recently, uh, it has been another occasion of that sort. Many, by the way, want to work in Russia. They want to take part in compelling, important research projects. They also raise a, an issue about restoring the program of mega grants. These mega grants bring together strong research teams in order to address uh, uh, important scientific issues. And I fully support this idea. So I request the government and the State Duma to cover in the federal budget until 2026 the required financing for the mega grant program and also to amend the modalities of the program in order to make its conditions more attractive for scientists. I believe we need to increase the minimum size of mega grants and by the way, colleagues have mentioned the point too. We also need to extend the period of implementation, say for five years, some say until the period of 10 years, uh, with a possibility of extension uh, of up to three years, which will make almost 10. Primarily, we need to support major scientific initiatives of our compatriots and leading foreign scientists, including those who have already taken part in world-level laboratories in Russia. For a period of five years, a scientist is to receive for his initiative 500 million rubles, uh, provided they are ready to work in Russia on a permanent basis. 250 million rubles of support will be provided to leading foreign scientists coming to Russia establishing departments in our universities, teaching, working with students and postgraduate students. This is uh, hardly any different from previous conditions. We, however, reiterate them and extend. As a result, our foreign colleagues will build scientific schools on key high priority areas of science and technology and another fundamentally new area. Within the updated mega grant program, we will provide assistance to promising young researchers, including our compatriots who want to return back home, who want to contribute to scientific technological solutions. And there is quite a number of those people. Let me reiterate the updated mega grant program is to be launched within a short term. We welcome to our country all scientists who share the principle of openness on science, they dedicate their life to the exploration of science, they are dedicated to future projects. We, on our part, will spare no effort in making sure that future products are translated into globally competitive products today. I want to thank everyone involved in major joint effort on this subject. Ross Congress specifically for organizing our forum, the Russian Quantum Center, Ross Adam, Russian Railways companies whose heads are here, innovative enterprises, leading research institutes and universities for scientific and technological breakthroughs for their continuous commitment to the progress. I would like to specifically thank the Russian Academy of Sciences for its deep scientific assessment of research and technological pro projects. Colleagues, please expand not only expert but also scientific and instructional support for our national development programs. Let me add next year the Russian Academy of Sciences is to celebrate its 300th year anniversary. At the current stage of its development, the RAS brings together scientists, businesses to provide the scientific and technological sovereignty of Russia. I expect that it is the exact collaboration that we're going to see as we prepare ourselves for the next forum that uh, will take place next year, dedicated to development of neurocognitive biomedical technologies. Thank you for your attention.
Thank you so much, Mr. President. Very substantive report. Something we will work on. Uh, we can sometimes draw parallels while hearing you, while hearing about people, about the closed sign. Something, something we have felt when uh, we faced um, multiple closed doors, but it is a challenge. We do work. We provided you an insight into what we do. We have good morals. Whenever we discuss these topics, we turn back to the question who we are, to the issue of symbols of the new time. In 1937, Muhina presented his composition, the worker and the kolkhoz lady. This was the symbol of 1937. It's a good thing that you remembered exactly this symbol rather than anything else from 1937. We are positive. We try, try to keep out optimistic note. In the 60s, when the scientists managed to control the nuclear energy, uh, physics lyrics was the common phrase, and the, law, the role of physics was uh, unbreakable. Sometimes physicians would protect other people, they would defend them. In the 90s, science experienced difficulties. In the recent 20 years, we see major changes. So we ask ourselves, now that we discuss all these challenges together with colleagues, aren't we heroes of the new times, scientists? Of course, we are not claiming to be the heroes, the only heroes. We do respect other professions, but in your opinion, the role of a researcher, of a scientist, does it deserve to be, to be a, a hero? You know, scientist is a pioneer, is a person who is ahead of everyone. They are enthusiasts. Only enthusiasts are successful. One point. The other one. Every time calls for its heroes in the 60s. Of course, it began a little earlier than that. Since you uh, remember the 1937, Lavrin Tiberia back then was the head of the nuclear project. He was involved in missile building. All that is rooted back there. The time called for results in this specific industry people working in this industry made heroes in the public minds. Now the times are different, the priorities have evolved. They can be tested easily. The recent uh, research of uh, the public survey center indicated that IT is the most popular profession among the youths, 31%. Medic ranks second with 30%. A military person is on the third place, defender of the motherland, so on and so forth. But let me emphasize, we saw that the interests of the youth in engineering professions, professions grew multifold, if I'm not mistaken, by a factor of five. In spite of the fact that people, many, people do see many things w without elaborating on them specifically, multifold increase in interest in engineering occupations is the sign of our time. As for researchers, they are ahead. They are pioneers. You know this better than I do. Many Nobel Prize laureates receive the prizes decades after their discoveries. When they discovered things, they never thought about prizes. They only moved on. We should bow our heads low as a sign of respect to these people for their nature. Thank you. Moving to the enthusiasts, Ilya Simirikov, even in our community, 
is really a looks like an enthusiastic person. It's just scary sometimes, but it's also very exciting. Ilya, can you please share your experience? Uh, very much so. I'm an enthusiast for good or for bad. Now, almost every step in my life, I ask a question whether it's going to bring us closer to building a useful quantum computer. If the answer is yes, then I have no other questions to raise for myself. That means we need to take this path. But the history began not today, not yesterday. This history began in almost 2015. I realize I don't want to go in astrophysics, instead I want to go into quantum optics. So I approached Nikolai uh, Kalachevsky in, in his laboratory, he presented his computer today, and I asked him whether he would take me. I'm very grateful to Mr. Kalachevsky. Back then I didn't knew, know anything, he said yes to me. At the same time, I was accompanied by another two persons, Ilya Zalivaka, Alexander Borisenko. Back then, they were students. So we got in touch, we started working together, and it turned out that we are very different people. Almost every solution took hours with us. We would be shouting at each other, losing our voices. Still, despite being different, whenever we are arguing, we recall our main cause, which is to build a quantum computer. Previously, we faced other missions. This difference and also deep respect for each other, I would even call it love. All this enables us to have different, different perspectives on an issue and uh, to find different solutions. We started collaborating, which was very important. To learn things, you need to work in practice. After graduating from the university, you need to do things in action. Starting 2015 to 2017, we did simple things like catching ions, building traps. Later, we started working in applied science. It was more difficult, like super precise clock for GLONASS. It took another three years with us. Then we started working on the roadmap. There was major discussion whether we need to include ion platform into the effort, because for other platforms there were tangible outcomes in quantum computing. And here I'm very s grateful to Ross Atom. They did believe in us. They said, yes, we should do it too. We were very much inspired. From that time on, for three years, we are literally living in laboratories uh, on Saturdays, Sunday, uh, the only thing that saves us is that the university closes down at 11. Otherwise, we would be staying nights on out there. So our effort is to build a quantum computer, something we uh, presented to you today. It makes useful things. They do not follow immediately from it. It modulates molecules rather than uh, focuses in some scientific abstraction. It is important to us. Our dream is to make a useful quantum computer, to make a computer that indeed would address problems uh, faster than supercomputer, that would be useful to a wide range of people. I think today we have a range of ideas to implement it how to build a machine that indeed would revolutionize the way it is supposed to do. It's a long-term effort. To bring people together, we spent almost 10 years. From the moment of our first steps until today, we spent about 10 years, we learned a lot throughout the period. The main point is that uh, those who participate in the process do not retire. I'm 31 today, Ilya and Alexander are 27, 29 respectively. In our group, by the way, I'm the veteran. 
of those who live in the laboratory. We have another 10 years. We'll wait and see afterwards, but for 10 years we will be active. It is the next step. We need another 10 years to put into practice our ideas. They are born as we work. It turns out they do not work. An expander knows for sure. If you came, if you come up with an idea, it will not work on the first go. It just were a couple of examples, but then it did on the first run. So it's important that we build a supercomputer. To do so, we need your support. And thank you so much for mentioning uh, that uh, we uh, look uh, at uh, within the range of 25, 30. And thank you so much. And we are also ready to commercialize these technologies to add amendments to the roadmaps by building startups, small enterprises. In order for this thing not to be uh, in laboratory only, in order to gain its momentum throughout Russia as well as throughout the world, and I think the technological level we have attained enables us to do so. We can only be envious with you, or uh, people uh, are really suffering, dying to leave their workplaces. You, however, want to stay in the workplace. It means happiness. A person really dedicates his entire life to his cause. Let me uh, share the following. Certainly, I'm a little far from this state, but whenever they ask me, how did I come up with this idea? The answer is very simple. I think about this day and night. I go to sleep thinking about this. I wake up thinking about this. And the solution is found unexpectedly. And I think it is the paradigm you live in. Yes, I live in this every day. I come back home late at night and I tell my wife, Wow, well, well, what happened at the lab today? That's a ritual to us, and uh, basically all we talk about is uh, based around two things, the quantum computing and the people. Uh, these are the two things that are interesting to me in life, most of all. I'll see what happens next. Don't forget your wife. You might pay it for that later. Yes, our wives are heroes too, I agree. Yes, thank you, Ilya. Yes, Rosatom is up to launch the new program and the roadmap. Uh, oh, Mr. Lekhachov, could you comment on the life and uh, the work of Rosatom? All right, speaking of the roadmap, this was a great challenge to us. But still, I believe that anyone dealing with the administration will understand me. I am sorry for such frankness, but when you're summoned to the government and told that in three or four years, if there is no financement, you will have to show the results, and you don't really know what the results should look like. The technologies don't exist yet, but the government will keep monitoring your activities together with the Academy of Sciences. And at this point, you immediately think back to Lavrenti Beria, who was the head of the nuclear industry as it was created. And the only thing we're thinking about is to keep up to the high standards of the Soviet and Russian nuclear industry. But these are emotions. This was a great challenge, and I'm thankful to those who launched the roadmap to Mr. Andrei Belousov and Mr. Oreshko, Mr. Chernyshenko. And we work together with all of them and getting assistance from them. And this is truly a unique roadmap. It's not just a management mechanism. This is a mechanism of creating interaction and mutual support, and I would even say mutual trust. Back then, three years ago, Alexei Fedorov was uh, three years younger, and we couldn't really understand how we should build our relations with a dozen of science groups working in various institutions and uh, we're working with a veteran uh, leaders, for example, Mr. Sadovnichi, the head of the Lomonosov Moscow State University programs. And we're working with many talented people. And the fact that we have managed to become a sort of a back office for this work by assuming certain administrative work 
for example, on the 4040 law and on the state budgeting, and the colleagues trusted us, and they did not ask any additional questions. And within two years, a very short period of time, this has given us the results that we see today, and we were even bold enough to show them to the President of the Russian Federation. And the second aspect of our mission is to work as actively as possible to introduce the quantum technology in the nuclear field. These technologies are only emerging. They are barely toddlers in their infancy, basically, but we need to speed up. We need to introduce this to the nuclear field and introduce this to the industry, making them a, an integral part of the technology landscape. At the same time, we understand that, keeping in mind the great external pressure, we also need to help our scientists with the components, with the equipment, since import substitution is not really import substitution. We're talking about our technological sovereignty, and this is exactly what the state corporations are doing and our other colleagues are doing that, including Gazprom Bank. And, uh, I hope that Alek Valentinovich Milozorov will talk about this. And to conclude, I would like to say that, in a sense, we are proud of the results that we have achieved. And we are proud of the family, the quantum community that is being born in front of our eyes. We are proud of the trust and the level that we have achieved. We, with the capital W, have achieved that in less in a, a bit more than two years. And there are two important aspects that we need to point out. And thank you for mentioning them, Mr. President. The first point is that we can now open to equal international cooperation within BRICS and within the bilateral cooperation. And we're not in the bottom. We're at the top of our group. And we can offer scientific and research cooperation. There was a great proposal during the meeting with the scientists to create a certain BRICS Nobel Prize alternative, a mark of recognition. This would be very important. And another important aspect that I would like to mention today, we can truly see that this model or the prototype or the simulator, this computer can be introduced to other industries. For example, we can use this for professional training to show what this technology will look like. This is not about the presentations. This is a really working product. And the roadmap, or rather not the roadmap, but one of the federal projects or national projects, we understand what we will be doing until the end of this decade and what are the goals for the year 2030 and how to accelerate the development of this industrial platform, this new quantum industry. This is the same as three years ago. We can't really see the final image, but we get the general sense. We can not only create this space, we can work harder to implement it. Thank you, Mr. Lekhachov. Today we were showing the solutions for quantum chemistry, and these are useful tasks that would accelerate the development of new medicine and materials. But quantum computers also introduce new threats for the standard encryption systems, and the quantum physicists are also considering this problem. Mr. Vladimir Yegorov works in the area of quantum protection and security. Mr. Yegorov, over to you. Good afternoon, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues. It is true that the quantum computers have numerous uh, interesting applications. And one of them is hacking the existing encryption protocols and algorithms, which is why the various states are actively working on the quantum computing. As we work on the quantum communication, we are fighting against this threat. The quantum data security systems allow us to distribute the encryption keys in such a way that they cannot be stolen or copied or captured by a man-in-the-middle attack. Therefore, they allow us to automate the processes and change the keys. Quantum communication will not be a replacement for the existing networks for secure data transfers. Rather, they would complement them. They have a number of limitations and therefore 
it would be most productive to use them along with other promising technologies of in information security like the post-quantum cryptography. As we work together with our colleagues from the industry and with the regulator in the sphere, we will truly create a digital shield for our country. Today, as we work on the quantum communication, we have reached the most important stage as we're moving on from the science laboratories to the introduction. There will be three stages. The first one is the establishment of federal quantum networks for key transfers and exchange. We're doing this right now. The second stage following the certification is the connection of outside subscri subscribers and we would uh, like to introduce as many industries and as many actors as possible. And in the long term, the final stage would be the use of quantum communication for the protection as well as for the transfer of information. And this would be used in the Internet of Things and therefore we would move on to the full-scale quantum Internet. What are the prospects brought about by quantum communication? In essence, today no one can really answer this question fully. I would uh, compare this to the space sphere. As we launch the first Sputnik, no one could understand and believe that 50 years later we would have the full satellite imagery of the Earth. The same goes for quantum technology. There is great capacity and potential in that and the quantum communication is at the heart of all of that. It links together the communication, the sensors and the computing. I work in this sphere. I've been doing this for 16 years, although I'm relatively young, and I've seen the shift of the attitude. First it was only seen as science fiction, but now at the exhibition we see that any school pupil understand what quantum communication means. And at the beginning of the roadmap, I was invited to the Russian Railroad Company to talk about this technology, and I was explaining the basic principles of quantum mechanics, and I was using a couple of different colored socks for Mr. Belazerov, and I was thinking about how we could introduce this to a more conservative industry such as the railroads, but in the end, it was a success, and when I moved from Petersburg to Moscow, I look at the wires outside and see our quantum network at work. The roadmap mechanisms has proven to be an efficient way to embrace the chaos of the science and the bureaucracy of the state companies, and it has set the right trend forward. One of the main areas of work for us is the development of the professional capacity, the people who are at the heart of this. By the year 2030, we would need over 1,300 1, educated specialists in the quantum field, not counting the specialists who would go through additional education and qualifications. These are the scientists, the engineers and other specialists. More than 10 Russian universities currently have educational programs in quantum communication. Today, I would like to point out the most important aspect of my speech. Today, quantum communication is the science of the young. The breakthrough research in the roadmap and in the other development programs are led by the students and postgraduate students, uh, the PhD students, and many of them will also do teaching. In our group of people, as mentioned by Ilya, I am one of the oldest people, and it is a great joy for me to see the very young people go into the sciences and achieve the world-class results. And this brings me the most joy in my field of work, to see the people who are younger than me. And I think that today it is important to preserve and to multiply this intellectual capacity in quantum communication and other high-tech industries by supporting the young scientists. Today this support is mainly expressed by the grants and uh, scholarships. I spend a long time talking with young scientists. I know what they live with and it would be great if you could consider the possibility of extending and expanding this social support for young scientists by the state. For example, by the reduced rate mortgages and uh, additional preferences for the children who go for university studies and uh, the same principles work to support the people in the IT. And let me point out that in the last decade the image of the Russian science has uh, radically changed. There are many new young people. It's quite trendy to be a scientist today and I think that our work and the measures that we could be adopted additionally would allow us to accelerate the development of the industry even further and to 
draw even more young specialists and to continue the great traditions of the Soviet and Russian science. Thank you very much. Mr. Putin, could you comment on this statement? What is there to comment? I can only agree with that. This is exactly what we will do. As for the support for the young, we fully agree with that. There are numerous young researchers in this field and the numbers are growing. You were talking about the labs that appeared thanks to the mega grants and we have numerous laboratories like that and if memory serves me right, we have 346 laboratories not only in the leading science centers, they are located in about 10 cities and they were not really renowned for the creation of large-scale research schools. And as we move on with this work, we were working with the scientists and we were listening to them. The people working at the labs made their own proposal. They suggested that we create the better conditions for the young Russian researchers. This is exactly what we've been doing. And today, these laboratories have 50% of the researchers who are young scientists or postgraduate students. Sure, there is much to be done yet, and there are certain social issues to solve. We need to create the necessary foundations for that and to improve and get the necessary equipment. We are all well aware of that, and we know what we should be doing, and we will keep doing that. Thank you, Mr. Putin. We have a very interesting discussion here, but if the discussion is interesting, we are always running short on time. So I would like to ask the speakers to be more brief to make sure that everyone has an opportunity to speak. And sure, Mr. Oleg Belazorov, this is your field of work. No one was expecting that the Russian railroad would enter the quantum field three years ago. And today we see the way the networks wor work and we've seen the inter-university networks in practice. Could you add anything about your vision? Thank you very much, Mr. Putin. I would like to express my gratitude for supporting the very specific format. We were talking about the roadmap a lot, but this is not simply a roadmap, not just a format of interaction with the state. Supposedly, we should be working as equals, although generally it's the other way around. The government is supervising us, and we are working as the inferiors with uh, our own KPI, and the results don't always match. But here, in case of this roadmap, we're all working together as a team, and we can only reach the results together. And you supported this mechanism, and the result has been seen today. We're a very pragmatic industry. We're result-oriented. We work in the passenger and cargo transfers, and the quantum communication hasn't really been the focus before. Let me give you some figures to make sure that we get the full picture of the important component of our work, namely the data protection. We have accumulated 32 petabytes of data. This is a great volume of data, and everything that moves along the railroad is always Record it. This is information that is transferred rapidly, and information needs protection. Last year, the volume of attacks against our systems was 237,000 a day, and we're thankful to all our colleagues for deflecting such cyber attacks on our networks and systems. We understand that attacks against our information systems will continue, and people will try to penetrate them. But quantum communication allows us to give a better understanding. If we use such mechanisms together with the existing ones, we would achieve an unprecedented level of security at the railroad. We see how we can apply the quantum communication. There have already been some research and together with the colleagues, we have managed to put this into practice. And we are glad to note the conservative nature. But at the same time, we should be more enthusiastic. And we have become enthusiasts. We have moved forward. 
although the railroad people were quite enthusiastic about this project. And today, we are the leaders in the world in the field of quantum networks. We are among the leaders by the length of our quantum networks. Our colleagues are creating the national homemade equipment. And next year, we will increase the length of the network by two times. And by the year 2024, and we will and by the year 2030, we'll have 15,000 kilometers of quantum networks spanning across our country. We're actively moving forward in other areas as well. And much is being said about the professionals, the people. Together with the scientific centers, we have been working to sign agreements on the specific numbers of graduate students on the specific numbers of professionals that we would like to get. We are thankful to the government. Standards usually serve as slowing us down, but if we do it the right way, standards only accelerate our work. And just two days ago, the government signed the concept for the regulatory relations in the area of quantum communications, and we are thankful to them for that. Everything is written very clearly, and this would give us an opportunity to move forward as well. But we are not stopping on that on the ground. Today, colleagues have reported that together with the Lomonosov Moscow State University, we signed an agreement. Together with the MSU, we are opening the engineering center on the Vorobyovogory district not, uh, at the district of the Lomonosov Moscow State University and we will work on joint research there and the, we will use the results of such research in our daily work and in the part of space technology as well. To conclude, I would like to say that we have already moved from theory into practice and I hope we have shown that today. Thank you. Railroad transport is of special importance in Russia. It is a fundamental industry. Like energy, the entire economy builds upon them as they mean security, speed, safety, and uh, all of them are very important. It's also very important that the industry progresses. It uh, develops thanks to newest technologies. It's of great relevance. We can only applaud this. Frankly speaking, Mr. Belazorov said uh, you gave your support. Well, I'm proud of not hampering with the process. process and thanks to this, they succeeded. Thank you so much. When we prepared ourselves for the forum, Mr. Belazorov said very interesting stories behind the curtains like his engineers never heard about quantum technologies now they say quantum technologies belong to them this innovative thinking uh, the technologies do promote innovative thinking not only in these industries uh, there are other accompanying industries that uh, see results as well we mentioned data security quantum computers do not only mean attacks they mean algorithms to be used in the industry, in the city. Hence, I hand it over to Alexey Fedorov. He has been working for quite a while on algorithms. He uh, has been testing them. Mr. President, colleagues, I would like to continue the topic of moving from theory to practice. Yes, my colleague said uh, the usefulness of quantum computing builds on the economics, and there are plenty of illustrations worldwide. The demand for quantum technologies does grow, and this enables to get connected to quantum networks to introduce quantum computers. Although there is no economic outcome, still our work on the software must continue now. In order for us to come up with the hardware, to find a use for this hardware, we want to thank Gazprom Bank using quantum technologies and uh, Ross Atom, the pioneers in the industry. Uh, not only do we build a quantum computer with them, the focus on the qu of the quantum computer to us 
is just uh, talking about the first uh, uh, set of objectives, uh, optimization of energy consumption for reactors, energy applications. We see multiple initial applications and we are ready to develop this. We want to make the quantum computer a useful tool for every individual. And here we are thankful to Moscow government. Thanks to our collaboration, we found new users in order to attain new optimization goals in terms of logistics, delivery, urbanism in uh, planning new production sites, in data protection for a city, in finding um, uh, high efficiency and improving the living standards of every citizen, of every individual. We are very much happy to see such centers of the implementation of quantum technologies for 2025, 2020, 2030. Such centers of quantum computing uh, would be a very prominent goal to uh, attain. Of course, the focus of our forum is people and the implementation of quantum ideas uh, was driven by my colleagues. They created a quantum computer for small useful tasks, tasks, but they were useful. We are very happy as a quantum family. We find use in quantum technologies. We find the benefits that these technologies bring. Uh, we can only wish you every success. You show the quantum computer to me. As you have correctly mentioned, it's just initial test of uh, the technology. It is really impressive. Even more so as you demonstrated the, the fact that uh, conventional computing would take centuries. With quantum computing, it uh, takes mere hours, days, it is really impressive and it makes clear the importance of these future technologies today in developing any economy, any aspect of human life. We, we, we can wish only success to you in supporting your progress. Thank you, Mr. President. In your speech, you have mentioned Mr. Sabanian. He is currently building the Moscow Quantum Cluster. If possible, can we give a rover mic to Mr. Sabanian for him to comment on the topic? Good afternoon, colleagues. Mr. President, you appointed me with a task to provide greater support for photon technologies and quantum technologies in Moscow. It makes sense as we have multiple enterprises with world high competences world-class competences in the field. As for photon technologies, we came up with a photon cluster for photonics and microelectronics. The central priority of this cluster, including over f uh, approximately 50 enterprises of Moscow, is to build photonic integrated circuits for transceivers. This technology allows us to increase the processing and transfer of data by a factor of 100. This technology is uh, not the matter of science fiction. It is something being implemented nowadays in many countries. If we lag behind with these technologies, we will be forced to buy ready products like we did standing in a line waiting for this technologies to be sold to us. We started building a laboratory and industrial hub in Zelenograd. Next year, we will finalize it. We expect in 2025 to receive the first outputs in order to provide it to consumers. I mean, communication carriers, data centers, internet providers, so on and so forth. They thus will reduce energy consumption. They will speed up data transfer. The economy will be revolutionized. As for quantum technologies, we work in two areas. The colleagues present here um, and with Mr. Bilazorov, we signed at the SPF an agreement to build and connecting um, quantum center on the basis of the Lomonosov Center. 
which we have inaugurated recently. It will be one of the areas of this cluster. The second agreement was signed today with Rosatom, with the Russian Quantum Center to build a laboratory industrial hub in Skolkova. We are to finalize it until the next year. It will be used for developing new technologies, startups, for products. We are not into scientific research, but our focus is to provide people with infrastructure, bringing isolated enterprises to these platforms and finding future buyers, future consumers for their products, including industrial enterprises of Moscow, city-specific enterprises. As Alexei correctly mentioned, we're talking about education, healthcare, transport, and uh, city development. These technologies must exist today. We should have a base of such technologies in order for those who develop the industry, the, the relevant technologies, to know who their consumers are. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, let me add, on my in my personal capacity, we visited many cities of the world. When we created the Quantum Center, uh, we thought about various places as a good places to live, but turns out the best city to live in from the viewpoint of infrastructure from the convenience is Moscow. And it's gratifying that Moscow is forward looking in order for it to remain the best city to live in. It's not a compliment. I mean, I do believe that we live in the best city in the world. It's also a good attractive point for scientists. We tell them, you should come for at least a week, have a look. And they are surprised upon coming. It is the case. Moscow, by many estimates, independent of that, provided by competent experts, is recognized as one of the world's best metropolises in many areas. It is really the case. Uh, suffice to mention the appearance of Moscow. Suffice to mention the development of the transport infrastructure. Let's recall the situation of uh, uh, two years ago. They said to address transport issues of Moscow uh, is an impossible task. They, in fact, uh, these issues have been tackled uh, not all of them have been tackled, but they are being tackled with high technologies in transport, in road construction. There are always criticisms for the current authorities in, in places, in regions too. Such a big economy always has gaps. But generally speaking, the progress of Moscow towards its maximum efficiency for the citizens, for commuters, for guests. Uh, these achievements are obvious. And these achievements are thanks, and I emphasize thanks to modern technologies. We can only be happy about this. And we can only wish Moscow to continue working in the same direction under the leadership of the mayor of Moscow and his team. Thank you. Here, I would like to recall that Mr. Bilazurov mentioned space technologies. And here we have representative of space technologies, Nadezhda Barshevska. She indeed is into space quantum communications. Here I represent the Moscow State University. We worked on researchers to increase the accessibility of existing quantum networks, such as those presented today the university university quantum network the space segment of quantum communications uh, allows us to expand the geographic coverage of these technologies and uh, connect them to remote territories for instance moscow and russia's far east could be connected without building land-based infrastructure for future we can uh, also get connected with mobile devices, uh, with transport industry, we can build a global quantum network connecting together the land-based and air uh, 
or space rather, uh, segments. Uh, the efficiency is uh, illustrated by the fact that China, among other states, are w widely developing the quantum distribution, quantum key distribution technology. We here have every capacity to uh, have success in uh, quantum communications. Uh, there are a lot of results in scientific research. For instance, our specialists uh, uh, developed and launched small satellites. Uh, they experimented on the quantum key distribution through uh, free space. Moscow State University also has a number of astronomic observatories located in various parts of Russia. They can be used for various experiments in uh, space, outer space quantum communications. Uh, we also want to make our products practical to reach uh, actual consumers. Hence, we work with our industrial partners with a special a laboratory that is uh, certified quantum cryptographic devices. Our team, as well as many other teams uh, working on quantum technologies, have uh, a lot of students. Their contribution is matters a lot as they uh, add very promising ideas to our endeavors. So it's very important that we support them so that uh, they are very confident in being in science throughout their period of education. It would be great if we came up with a new scholarship named after an, uh, an outstanding Moscow State University professor, David Klishko, who laid the foundation for the quantum technology development in Russia. It is worth a, a thought we will discuss this with colleagues. What is your take on the level uh, of Russian technologies in quantum uh, outer space quantum uh, communications compared to your rivals? We are on a world class level in terms of outer space communications. We are about 10 years behind in China. Uh, in comparison to China and other countries. What, what are the prospects? What is your take on the prospects? And what is to be done in order to advance the outer space quantum communications is currently a part of the roadmap. We are beginning this in the near future. In three years, uh, we intend to launch uh, the first satellite for testing our technologies. So there are specific steps, right? Excellent. You have mentioned an industrial partner. What is it? It's Infotex company. What is the support of the partner? What, uh, how do you help it? It is the enterprise that uh, produces uh, our products on a serial basis specifically. Can you mention specific outcomes? We, we are making very first steps. We come up with ideas of what technologies should be in order to ensure quantum key distribution. The company in its turn carries out design. It commissions, right? Uh, well, uh, it's a great thing to hear. As for scholarships, we will discuss the topic tomorrow. Thank you so much, Mr. President. We had a debate. We had a look at quantum computing, a quantum computer too, but the major portion of our discussion was dedicated to youths who achieve these successes. You saw them as living beings, and the uh, other aspect of living beings is that they have reservations or concerns whenever we ask them. Uh, they are concerned about the government cancelling science during these difficult days and the fact that you are here today is a strong message to the entire community. Well, even uh, without mentioning the uh, formulations that you gave in your speech, the fact that you are here together with the guys, you strong, send a strong message to us all. Thank you so much for being here. Even the almighty government of the Russian Federation cannot cancel science. Out of question. No need to think like this. 
Deputy Prime Minister Chernyshenko is here. Can you elaborate on the intentions of the government? Please give a microphone to Mr. Chernyshenko. Do you have any plans of cancelling signs? Please be frank. Mr. President, absolutely no. We follow your instructions uh, of year on year. We spend 1.2 trillion rubles according to the 47th uh, law. So there is no prospects of reducing science. In addition to ins fulfilling the instructions, uh, they also attain visible, tangible outcomes, especially in the difficult days of today. Uh, as for mega grants, the Ministry of Higher Education and Science uh, must have a closer look at the previous. Uh, uh, instructions given to them, please uh, uh, have a look and uh, because the, for 2025 we have not allocations. Uh, for 2024, yes, we do have 2 billion uh, and it continues from the previous times. You have correctly mentioned 246, is 346, right? Yes, yes, 346, quite right. And uh, the uh, uh, grudging money for 2025, reducing the number of laboratories. Well, of course, we will make every effort in uh, implementing your instruction together with the Ministry of Finance. Uh, we seem to be at the very conclusion. I just need a 30 second remark to add and a correction to make. Mr. President, you coming here is a strong signal to us all. It's a medal of sorts, but every medal has two sides, as they say. So, my, uh, I, I say this now to my colleagues of the Quantum Center. It is also an advanced payment of sorts, as we will have to present a different level uh, for the next conference. We will be keeping the high standard. By the way, for the next year, as I have already announced the topic of the future forum, extremely interesting and uh, something we have discussed with the colleagues at the meeting. It's also another fundamental area of development, biotechnologies and related industries. I'm sure it will be uh, held on the same high level. I want to thank the organizers for the work carried out as they prepared and organized this forum. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. President. Looking forward to seeing you next year. We'll be preparing. Thank you. Good luck. Afrique Média, le monde, c'est nous.